You can think of IVF first as procedures that we do to help a woman produce eggs. IVF has changed very much uh, over the last 30 years that we've been doing it. Um, when we started, maybe 10, 12 percent of women would get pregnant from a cycle, and now we're four, five times that much in, in selected patients. So it's a big change in the technology. We uh, have uh, methods of trying to help women who other centers would say can't make an egg um, to produce eggs. In IVF, um, one of the advantages are that if we can make a lot of eggs, we can choose among those eggs uh, to, find, to try to find uh, the strongest embryos and then only put back the appropriate number of embryos for a woman's age to help her achieve her maximal chance of pregnancy. IVF directly addresses uh, the issues um, for very low sperm counts, um, where it's far too low to have success even with something like IUI. Um, with uh, uh, tubal disease, which we mentioned before, so if the tubes are blocked, the only way you're going to get pregnant is if you're taking eggs and sperm, put them together, making them into embryos, and then putting them back into the uterus. Uh, many uh, large IVF centers, ones that are doing thousands of cycles a year, when a patient comes there, they're put into the center's protocol. So the center has a particular way that they deal with people and everybody gets dealt with in that fashion. It's kind of like McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always get a hamburger. On the average, the hamburgers come out okay, but it's different uh, than what you would get if you go to a fine restaurant. We like to think we're more like the second. Um, we're looking at patients, we're looking at a lot of individual factors uh, that go into them. Many of the patients that come to us are people who've been told already that they can't do IVF because their ovaries are just not going to respond, they have to donor egg, they have to forget about having children. Um, and, and we pay a lot of attention to those people to try to find the way that we can tease out those eggs and, and help them uh, to find their way um, to a successful production of embryos and thereby uh, a chance of pregnancy. Um, so uh, we think one of the things that really distinguishes CHR is our ability to, to look at patients as, as individuals, to understand um, what's going on with their uh, reproductive function, uh, and to really tailor our approach to them uh, to maximize their response. Uh, many places, uh, you'll sit down, you'll talk to a nurse, you'll spend a few minutes with a doctor that you won't see again uh, ever uh, for, until maybe you do a retrieval or a transfer. At CHR, um, you'll spend, uh, with Dr. Gleischer or myself, something like an hour uh, or more at the first visit. Uh, we'll talk to uh, both the husband and the wife, uh, hopefully the husband's available as well. Um, and um, get a detailed medical history, really understand what's going on with them and try to understand their prior um, fertility experience so we can bring all of that uh, to bear as we formulate um, how we're going to take care of them. IVF centers will sometimes pick and choose their patients. So there are many IVF centers who won't accept a very difficult patient for fear of changing their published success rates. And we all use our success rates to help attract patients. Uh, at CHR, we believe we're here to try to help the patients, not just our published rates. And so we'll take on <clears throat> women, as I said before, take on couples where the woman's been told she needs donor eggs. If she wants to try to get pregnant with her own eggs, and you can't <clears throat> take away the fact that most of us would rather have babies that come from our own gametes, um, we'll give her an opportunity. But it's an informed opportunity. We'll explain to her what her chances are. We'll explain to her what our experience is. And um, she has to understand that, at best, her chances are going to be 
much lower than it would be if she did do the alternative donor egg. Everybody who comes to an IVF center wants to know what's the success rate. What, is, what does this mean? And there's no simple answer to that question because expected success will depend on um, how old the patient is, what the particular problems that they're dealing with are. We can talk about if a patient comes to me and I get to know them, and then I can predict what I believe their success rate's going to be. Um, but I can't talk about a blanket answer because what's true for a 25-year-old with tubal problem is going to be different than for a 44-year-old with decreased ovarian function. So we have to be very careful uh, as we look at that. When we talk about success rates, we talk about pregnancy, that is um, live birth. So you can talk about baby per cycle. How many cycles do I have to go through at a particular age to bring home a baby? And that's the most important thing that people want to know. But not everybody reports their success in that way. So some people will talk about pregnancy, which just means I got pregnant, but doesn't account for whether you might miscarry, um, per transfer. Now, some people who have transfers um, will get pregnant, but some people who start cycles won't get to a transfer because there are people who get canceled because they don't respond to medications. So as you look at published success rates, you have to say, is this pregnancy per cycle, pregnancy per retrieval, pregnancy per embryo transfer? And the numbers change as you look at it. Also, is it live birth per cycle, live birth per retrieval, live birth per embryo transfer? And so you have to be a little bit sophisticated um, uh, and, and look at these things carefully to make sure you're comparing apples and apples. Um, many patients um, ask me what do they have to look at when they're choosing an IVF center. And there are all kinds of IVF centers in the world. Some are very large, some are doing thousands of cycles in the course of a year. I think you have to look at yourself and say, you know, what are my, what are my issues? Um, if you've got some unique sets of issues, if you've had failures at other IVF centers, um, you need a little bit more expertise. You need a little bit more attention to who you are and um, what your problems are. Uh, and, and you need somebody with experience. Uh, Dr. Gleischer and I together um, have more years than I care to count uh, of, of experience. We also are on the cutting edge of um, developing new procedures to take care of these, um, these problems. Um, we're sought after speakers. We publish probably more than the average uh, academic uh, fertility center does. We're really bringing to bear um, some very original thinking on uh, how to deal with these individual problems. So if you've got a unique set of issues, you want to go somewhere where people are going to pay attention to them and take them into account, not just throw you into some cookie cutter approach, uh, one size fits all. And I think that's really what we can provide here at CHR that makes it unique. We're providing experience, uh, really cutting edge research um, and, uh, and, and an individual approach.